Hello there and welcome once again to It's a Mystery and another collection of weird and wonderful mysteries that we will attempt to solve. As usual, we've been out collecting some of the most unbelievable stories that you're likely to hear. And we're going to be attempting to shed some light on those and other bizarre tales here in the studio. Now in today's show, there are some very strange goings on. The tale of two green children from a strange land. Is it all just a fairy tale? We'll be finding out what mysterious noises have been disturbing a picturesque village in Dorset. And we'll be discovering what secrets you hold at your fingertips. Okay, Tristan's got a real strange story for us to kick off with. It's a mystery who the green children were. Over 800 years ago, near a medieval Suffolk village, some locals returning from gathering their crops came across a young boy and girl standing at the entrance to a large hole. Someone in there. Come out, show yourselves. Come on out. Come. They've got green skin. They might be witches. They're not witches. They're children. Come here. Where are you from? Are you hungry? Oh, you must be. Come. You come with us. At that time, this type of hole was known as a wolf hole or wolf pit, which would have been used for trapping wolves. The locals were surprised to find the children, but what they really couldn't believe was the colour of the children's skin. Both of them were a kind of strange green colour. Not only that, they spoke some sort of bizarre language and were wearing what seemed to be weird clothes. The villagers looked after the youngsters and tried to feed them on bread, milk and honey. Mm -mm. Mm? But the children didn't seem interested in this food at all because they weren't used to it. They ate nothing until they were brought some fresh cut green beans. At last they'd been given something that they recognised. Slowly, as time passed, the children got used to eating normal food and lost their green skin colour. They also picked up the local language and began to tell the villagers of this strange place where they'd come from. All the people from our land were a, a greeny sort of colour. And there was no bright sun like you have here, just a very soft greenish light. It was while we were looking after our sheep, we came to a cave and heard the sound of bells. We went in and as we came out the other side, we bumped into you. <laughs> the two children finally settled down in the village. The boy didn't live long, but the girl grew up and married a man from a town called King's Lynn. They had several children together, and it's said that some of their descendants were still living less than a hundred years ago. Hmm, so what do you think of that story then? Could it be a fairy tale? Or is it someone's dream? Or could it be real? Sorry guys, but it all sounds absolutely bonkers. Well, actually it's not as ridiculous as you guys might think. Remember I mentioned that the children were found at the entrance of a wolf pit? Yeah. Well, there really is a village in Suffolk with a very similar name called Wool Pit. Wolf pit, wool pit. Better still, I've done some more research into this thing and in an old copy of a local newspaper, the East Anglian Daily Times, one report mentions that these children could have been waifs and strays who were suffering from jaundice, an illness that could have turned their skin a sickly green colour. Yeah, okay, well, that's one theory for the green skin. But what about this strange land they were supposed yeah. to live in with a soft light and all that? Yeah, I've got it covered. Experts say that at the time, the whole area was covered in thick, dense forest for miles and miles. Now, this would explain the dim greenish light that the kids were talking about. Sounds like this local legend could be based on some sort of truth, then. Well, it sounds okay, but can you prove it? Well, no. Oh, oh. After all that, I tried. <laughs> Think? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. We've got a really nice little mystery for you now. What is about the same size as this has got the texture of this and is made up 
of 90% of this salt water. It covers an area this size when it's spread out flat and it folds in on itself as it grows. Sounds like school dinners or some sort of weird pudding to me. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I'll give you some more clues. This thing can absorb enough information to fill all these files and is far more powerful than this computer. It's the nerve center of the entire body, responsible for thought, memory, language, and emotion. Yeah, yeah, okay, I've got it. It's the brain? He's good. Well He's done, good. Neil. <laughs> now, you probably think that what the brain is used for could be explained easily, but that's not so. In fact, there are still so many things about the brain that remain a complete mystery. Okay, guys, so what do we actually know about the brain then? Come on. All right, well, here's a few things. The human brain contains not a million, not a billion, but a staggering 15 billion of these brain cells. And they're so tiny that about 250 of them would be able to sit on this one pinhead. Now we use the left hand side of our brain for thinking and talking. And the right hand side is used for imaginative and artistic things. All right, you two brain boxes. I've got a mystery for you now. Now we've seen that the human brain is about the same size as a grapefruit, but did you know that we humans have the biggest brains of any animal compared with the rest of our body. Mm. So, little game for you. See if you can guess whose brain is this size. Who's got a brain the same size as one of these things? A walnut. A, a cat. A rabbit. No. Try a again. Sheep. Small no, dog. This one will freak you. Actually, it's the Stegosaurus dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah, they are huge. The Stegosaurus had a brain the size of a walnut. Now, dinosaurs had very small brains compared to the size of their bodies. Freaky, huh? Is mm. that why they became extinct, Neil? No. <laughs> Loads of theories for that. <laughs> but we could do a whole show We're on a that. Bit yeah. Right, try this one. Who's got a brain the same size as one of these. That's easy. Oh. Tristan. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know I don't mean so it. so funny. <laughs> yeah, but there are two things, so guess which the other one is. Uh, a mouse. No. A, mm, oh, a, a very small dog. Tristan's mouse, no. Uh. Well, actually, it's a little goldfish's brain. Despite popular belief, goldfish have a brain and a memory, although to what extent they have a memory is it's sort of great debate at the moment. However, the biggest mystery of all, when you compare all these brains, is that we humans only use around one-tenth of our brains. So, the big mystery is, what do we use the rest of it for? You know, some mysteries are so weird, they're totally unexplainable and they're never solved, yet others are sometimes solved in the most unusual way. Well, Gail has been on the trail of a very strange mystery that's been disturbing a small village in the heart of Dorset. Catterstock is a peaceful picture postcard of a village with colourful thatched houses, a picturesque church and a bustling community. People buy their groceries from the village shop play cricket for the local team, hold parties in the village hall. Everyone who lives here is happy and contented, but I've been hearing of some very strange tales. One evening, a local man returned home from his work. He went into his sitting room with his paper, sat down and put his feet up. Then coming from the corner of the room, he heard strange muffled voices. <laughs> At first he thought nothing of it, but then it happened again. The noise was definitely there. He got up to investigate. He checked behind the curtain, but there was no one outside the window. He couldn't make out what the voices were saying, but they seemed to be coming from inside the room. He checked the TV and then the stereo, thinking he may have left them on earlier on. But they were both switched off. He just couldn't figure it out. Another weird report tells of a lady who had just put the children to bed. Come on, you two, off to sleep now. Her husband wasn't due home till later, so she had plenty of time to get the dinner ready. She put on the oven glove and opened the oven door. 
that the noise that came out of the oven was a noise unlike any she'd ever heard from the oven before. Another incident is said to have been experienced by a retired businessman. He'd spent the day doing what he liked best, gardening. But before he cleaned up, he took time out to have a well-deserved cup of tea and admire his handiwork. Supper's nearly ready, dear. OK, dear, I'm finished. I'll just pack up my tools. Oh, I mustn't forget that radio. On the wall, there was a portable radio which he'd been listening to that afternoon. As he took a walk over to it to switch it off, he remembered that he'd actually unplugged it earlier. And it had no batteries, so how on earth was it playing music? Very strange. So, OK, what could possibly be the explanation for those weird noises? What about the muffled voices from the TV and that strange musical cooker? And what about that radio that wasn't even plugged in? What do you think's the explanation for what's going on? Well, the village of Catterstock is actually a few miles down the road from the Maryland transmitter site where the BBC transmits its radio service to the entire world. The programmes are beamed out by aerials suspended between these huge towers here. The signal has to be very, very strong so it can be picked up as far away as Russia and Asia. Sometimes, in certain weather conditions, the signals kind of leak a bit and get picked up by telephone lines and TV aerials by mistake. So the mystery of the muffled voices from the turned off TV and the strange noises that came from the radio that wasn't plugged in and the music that came out of the oven all have their explanations in these vast radio transmitters that send out their messages to the other side of the globe. Hi, my name's Diane Robertson and I work at an exhibition full of wax figures of famous people. In the six years that I've been here, I've always thought the figures were completely lifeless until last year when something really weird happened and now I'm not so sure. There are hundreds of figures at Madame Tussauds all made out of wax. Some are new and some are very, very old. We get thousands of visitors every day and sometimes the figures do get accidentally damaged and knocked. It's a very important part of my job to go through the exhibition and check that everything's in its rightful place. One day last year in April, I was walking through the museum when I came to the place where the wax figure of Adolf Hitler stands. His hair definitely didn't look quite right, and thinking that some of the strands of hair had fallen out, I leaned forward to take a closer look. There seemed to be no sign that any of the strands of hair had fallen out, and in the end I had to get somebody to cut his hair back into a neat straight line. I thought nothing more of Hitler and his hair until later that summer. I was in a meeting and somebody mentioned that his hair may need cutting. We all laughed and I couldn't believe it. I went down to take a closer look. There really did seem to be something out of place. Yeah. None of the strands of hair had fallen out. There was no tampering and no sign of any damage. It really did seem as though his hair had actually grown. In the end we had to trim his hair again. So what is going on? Could the hair on Adolf Hitler really be growing? Well, OK, we're going to take a closer look at the evidence. Now, this is the head of a famous figure, which is modelled out of wax. And false eyes, hair and other bits and pieces are then added on to make it more lifelike. Well, we found out that the hair used when making the models is actually real human hair. And it's brought from hair suppliers across the world. Now, real human hair grows at the rate of about one centimetre a month. But this is only when it's on a real live human head. Once it falls out or it's cut off, it should stop growing. So why had the hair on the waxwork mysteriously grown? Had there been some chemical reaction to make it grow again? Well, skin, hair and wax experts were all invited to investigate the hair. But they can't find any reason whatsoever why it would grow. I know it sounds daft, but I know what I saw, and I'm keeping my eyes on Hitler in case his hair starts to grow again. Nope. Nope. 
It's a mystery to me what secrets you hold in your hands. Seemingly nothing? Well, believe it or not, it's all in your fingertips. <laughs> As you probably know, your fingerprints are unique to you. No one else has them. And according to some experts, since the first mammals were discovered over 60 million years ago, no fingerprint has ever been exactly copied. They're also absolutely brilliant fun too. Have a look at your own fingers. Go on, have a wee look. Anyone will do. And have a close look at the pattern of your fingerprint. They're said to reveal secrets about both your personality and your health. So what shape is your pattern? Right guys, moment of truth. Have you been studying your pattern? Yeah, absolutely. Right, what does it all mean? All right. The most commonly found pattern is called the ulna loop. And strangely enough, it's a sort of loop shape. Uh, uh, I've got one of those. Really? So yes, you have. have. I have the it. loop. Yeah. So, okay, what's that supposed to say about me, Joe? All right, well, if you've got this sort of fingerprint, it could mean that you're very adaptable and you don't mind things changing. Is yeah, that's that is you, so. is it? Yeah, yeah, right. you'll, yeah, you'll do yeah, a bit of this and a little yeah, bit of that. And yeah. Adaptable sort of geezer. Yeah. Geezer. So, so if you've got one as well, maybe if you moved to a different school or to a new town, you'd settle in and you'd make new friends really easily. I've done it. I've moved house recently. recently. Mm. And I've settled in very nicely, thank you very much. Ooh, and you'll be invited spooky. around, etc, etc, etc. Yes, thank you. Watch this space. <laughs> Another common fingerprint pattern is called the composite loop. It's kind of like an S backwards. Has anybody got an S backwards? No, I'm an ulna no, loop. No, I haven't got yeah. one. But if you've got one of these, it may be that you're a thinker and a worrier. For example, you may find it very, very difficult to make up your mind. And when you do eventually make a decision, probably won't stick to it. Mm. That's my mother. I wonder if she, I'm going to check her fingers when I go mm. home. Creepy. Yes. By the way, you can't come to my house till I've decorated. Oh, okay then. <laughs> now then. We've got that sorted out. The other common pattern is one of these, a whirl. Now if you've got I've a got, whirl... I've got a whirl. Have you? I've got whirls all and over me. the place. And me Look too. Whirl man. Well if you've got one of these, take a look at it, you'll see it looks a bit like a knot pattern in a piece of wood. See that there? Mm -hmm. Now, wait for this. People with this sort of fingerprint pattern probably don't like to be bossed about much. <laughs> exactly like these two. It's not like me. Yes, it I'm is. I'm an easy going guy. Yes, it <laughs> is. Now, for example, if it's you, your parents might try to make you go to bed early, when in actual fact, you want to stay up late and watch your favourite TV programme. Yeah. Or something like that. You don't want to be bossed it's about. It's me down to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, these are just some of the common fingerprint patterns. There are many, many others. But the amazing thing is that your fingerprint is unique. In fact, fingerprints are so unique that many crimes have been solved because the criminals left their fingerprints at the scene of the crime. You know, I, I read something about an American criminal. And he tried to get rid of his fingerprints by getting a surgeon to stitch his ten fingers to his chest for 21 days. Oh. And when they were cut away, his fingerprints had disappeared. And the criminal thought that he'd beat the system. Wrong! Because then he was probably the only person in the world without fingerprints. Oh. What a painful and daft oh. thing to do. Oh, it's bringing tears to my eyes. <laughs> Stitching them. So there you go. It's amazing how much can be revealed just by looking at your fingerprints. So go on. What do yours say about you? We can't stop checking our fingertips now. Well, mm -hmm. that's it for this week. Some mysteries we've solved and some remain unsolved. So don't forget, join us next time for some more. Until then, here's one last mystery to leave you with. A man holding a water glass that was filled to the top dropped it on the floor. Now the mystery is, how come not one drop of water was spilt? Think about it. We'll reveal the answer next time. See ya. See you later. Last week's closing mystery was, which five letter word in the English dictionary does everyone pronounce wrong? The word is, wrong.